previously on the Aruba switching story. We learned about the Aruba Edge Services platform and how switching fits into the unified infrastructure portion of ESP. We've also learned about the Aruba Fabric Composer and how we can provision a data center to install our facial recognition application and get ready to plug in our camera. But we still need some more steps to finish off the data center. Today we're going to learn about data center bridging and how that can help in the data center with Aruba switching. With me now is Daryl Wan and Steve Baker, technical marketing engineers. Take it away, Daryl and Steve. Thanks, Justin. This is Daryl Wan and Steve Baker from the technical marketing engineering team. And we figured that since we're talking about data center, we should also discuss storage networking, which is also very common within data centers. So Steve, I know there are a variety of storage solutions used in the data center. Can you expand on that? Hi, sure, yeah. So um, to start off with, uh, common traditional storage solutions seen in data centers, seen in large enterprise data centers are gonna be commonly fiber channel solutions. Uh, these are uh, the most common speeds we see are eight, 16, 32, and even higher now. Um, but also InfiniBand is really uh, popular, especially in those high performance with uh, requirements like high frequency trading environments that require very high throughput and low latency. Um, another traditional uh, storage technology seen in data centers and large enterprises is also fiber channel over ethernet. I see. However, the Aruba CX switches do not support any of these solutions, correct? Yep. Yep, you're absolutely correct. Um, uh, but you know, more and more commonly now, storage solutions are being deployed using common ethernet solutions. These are small to mid-size enterprises, enterprises where customers can actually use these ethernet-based solutions to help uh, optimize and prioritize and ensure that that storage traffic is treated in a lossless manner. And that's where we here at Aruba can play. Um, we see iSCSI listed here. Uh, it was very common, of course, Rocky, uh, RDMA over converged ethernet is how we actually deploy this over the fabric. And then NVMe over fabric are also another solution that are common in these types of solutions. I see iSCSI listed there. Is iSCSI a solution that really utilizes the DCB protocol? You know, that's a good question. Um, iSCSI commonly does not require or utilize data center bridging. So most often iSCSI is deployed in a lossy fashion. However, there are actual iSCSI options out there which do support it and allow it. So the answer to that in all honesty varies. Um, going to the next slide, taking a little bit closer look at the RDMA protocol, we can see that with RDMA, the initiators and the targets within the data center are able to actually enable faster movement of data as data travels across the stacks within, within the operating system. And it requires very little CPU involvement. Um, and of course, when we deploy this on the operating system side, we would also wanna deploy on the network uh, so that the network prioritizes this traffic and treats it with DCB. I've heard a lot about converged networking. Do these DCB solutions enable converged solutions? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In fact, because these solutions largely le leverage Ethernet, they can be deployed in converged solutions or in side-by-side -side, uh, separate fabric solutions. But a lot of our customers in the medium to small enterprise will help, will deploy these in a converged environment to help save on infrastructure costs. That's great. Can you help expand on what protocols enable this converged networking? Yeah, so um, absolutely. So here's an overview of the data center bridging protocols and, and how they can actually help when de being deployed on a network. Starting at the top, we've got PFC or priority-based flow control. So this is a protocol that helps inform the attached devices not to drop any packets in that particular queue. Enhanced transmission selection is a way where we can actually slice up um, bandwidth on links. Uh, going to the initiators and to the targets. And so we can ensure that there's a certain amount of bandwidth that's dedicated for lossless traffic and a certain amount of bandwidth that's dedicated for lossy traffic. Um, QCN right in the middle, that's actually a, a monitoring and throttling layer two only protocol. And it's very rarely ever used. In fact, I've never seen it used in the real world. Um, that's the one protocol that we don't support. But like I said, I've never literally seen that de deployed in the real world. 
Uh, and then finally, the, the orange line there, data center bridge and exchange protocol. This is a cool protocol that helps exchange this DCB information between the attached hosts and targets, and it helps simplify the configuration on those ends. And then also, we can't forget about IPECN. IPECN is going to be leveraged in what we call a Rocky V2 solution. So these are solutions that have a layer three hop in the solution. And this is, again, a notification uh, protocol that helps inform those initiators and targets that there's, there's congestion across this layer three link. And so it will help uh, ask the targets to slow down and throttle down their traffic. That's great. I wonder if you can share with us a visual of how this will look like end to end when deployed. Uh, yeah, so absolutely. Uh, taking a look at our uh, campus data center uh, scenario, we can see in this scenario that within our data center, uh, the uh, face recognition app is actually receiving this stream of traffic, but then what it's doing is it's copying this stream of traffic to a storage array uh, from leaf one that's, and the storage array is attached to leaf two. And the uh, customer is going to deploy that in a data center bridging solution so that it provides lossless traffic between these racks in this data center, which can oftentimes get lots of um, you know, congestion in the data center. Focusing uh, a little bit more on the data center, we can actually see where these protocols are actually deployed in this end-to-end -end solution. So the data center bridging exchange protocol is gonna be configured on the interfaces facing the initiators and targets to help simplify the configuration on that side. We're also gonna be leveraging PFC across that link so that we can uh, ensure that no traffic, within, no traffic within that queue is dropped. But then of course, we're also gonna layer on enhanced transmission selection as well as over layer three links, ECN. And we're gonna largely configure this with uh, quality of service, class of service maps, as well as schedule profiles. That's very interesting. I wonder if you have any live examples to the config that we can look at. Um, yeah, let me show you my uh, simple lab environment here. So we essentially have leaf two on the right, which is sending traffic, a continuous stream of traffic to the storage target on the left. The configurations on each switches are the same, but let's take a look at the configuration on the, uh, the target side. We can actually first look at the QoS Q profile here. And we can see that I've got it configured. So all of the class of service markings, zero, one, two, three, five, six, and seven, all that traffic is going to go into Q0, but anything marked with a class of service of four is going to be treated uh, and placed into Q1, which is my high priority queue. I can actually look at uh, the schedule profile, and I can see that within the weights of these uh, different queues, I've applied 50% of the bandwidth to each queue. And taking a look at the actual interfaces, we can see uh, that I've applied flow control to that class of service, which has the priority marking of four. And of course, I've also applied the QoS schedule profile, and I've enabled the uh, proper VLANs. If we take a look at the queues on the switches, we can actually see the traffic is being transmitted just in those two queues. In fact, most of the traffic between these uh, initiators and targets is all going through that lossless queue which is the uh, Q1, which is treated by uh, priority-based flow control. Um, so that was a, you know, that was a really quick introduction to uh, data center bridging protocol suite. Um, but at this point, I'd like to turn it back over to Justin and just encourage anybody listening, if you're not comfortable with data center bridging and or if you have any sort of uh, further questions about data center bridging, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Thanks, Daryl and Steve for taking the time to explain how data center bridging works and how it's beneficial. Now that we have the data center ready to go and provision, we're ready to set up the switches to plug the, our camera into. So on our next episode, Matt Fern, is one of, part of our technical marketing engineering team, is going to tell us more about that and provide details on the different provisioning methods for campus switching with Aruba.